All right, now we're going to move into the first ever YouTube Take Mock Draft. What we're going to do is we're going to go position by position, and we're going to be a committee. We're not going to each have our own mock drafts because that's going to get too confusing. We're all just going to, per each person, based on team need and best and based on best player available, we are going to do our mock draft, and we're going to make it, and we could disagree, uh, but we're going to take a vote. And who majority rule wins, and whatever the majority rule decides, that's who's going to get picked in that spot. Um, so, I would like to start first overall with uh, the Houston Texans. And who do you three think? I'll go one by one. I'll go Eric, then Marquin, then Phil, in that order. And maybe we'll switch it up. Who is going to go first overall in this draft? Um. Hmm. Let me think. Um, <laughs> it's, it's easy for me. So. Let, let's go uh, Jadavion Clowney on the top there. Markeem? I, I agree. Phil? And I yet, think no matter who, th- and, and to throw it out there, I think no matter who makes this pick, even if they trade out this pick, this is Clowney. Yeah, I think this has to be Clowney. I, 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 don't, I, would, I honestly think the Texans are stupid if they don't do it, but... If they trade it out and they get value, I see where it's at. You know, it's, this is clowny. There's no doubt about it to me. But this pick, no matter who makes it, is clowny. Yeah, right, right. Like you said, like I said, you know, I don't see how the Texans can just let him go. There's just there's no way. All right. Um, I know that my vote is nullified. <laughs> um, I'm being dead serious here, though. I think this. I think this is Bridgewater, and I'll go to explain. I'll go to explain. I know you guys think I'm crazy, but here, let me let me explain. Um, Bob McNair did an interview a few days ago when they asked him, what are you thinking of the first overall pick? And yes, this could all be smokescreen and all this and that. But Bob McNair was saying how the draft process is very difficult and all this and that and everything's up in the air and all this and that. And then the reporter was asking, no, but like, how do you evaluate prospects? Like, how do you evaluate team me versus best player available? And he's like, well, obviously the quarterback is the most important position. If there was a surefire quarterback prospect like an Andrew Luck, then it's a no brainer. He's the pick. Now, Jadavian Clowney, for example, is a surefire defensive prospect, but he doesn't have as much of an impact as much as a quarterback does. So if it was a surefire quarterback prospect, that's a given. But because the quarterback prospects are very good but not surefire, now it becomes a little tougher. And they do have this defensive position, but it is not as impactful as the quarterback position. And he said this over and over again, and it really got me, it really got me thinking that they value the quarterback position very, very, very strongly. Now, mind you, they don't have a quarterback. This is a team that has been saying all offseason that the 2013 Texans was a mirage, that the Texans are going to get back to being a playoff team and all this and that, and they're going to be back in superstar form and all this and that. And everything that happened last year is not representative of the true Houston Texans team. But if you look at what the Texans need as far as what their needs are, you say some issues in the secondary – and the quarterback, because Schaub had a bad season and Schaub's gone now, and I don't think they see Case Keenum as a starter. So if they truly believe that they're a playoff team that's just a piece away from getting back to being a playoff team, they can't do that without a surefire quarterback. So yes, there's this theory that they'll pick a quarterback in the second round, but I don't think that's a surefire way to get back to being in the playoff position. I think all of this is one big smokescreen and they're going out first overall and taking a quarterback. And my prediction would be that it'd be Bridgewater, just because it'd be really ironic. Just because I've also had this conspiracy theory that they didn't want people to think they were taking Bridgewater because then those teams that want to trade for Judavian Clowney wouldn't talk to them, but would talk to the Rams, who look like a team that is going to trade out of that spot anyways. And I think by putting on the illusion that Clowney is for sure the number one pick, that's when you get the Clowney offers coming in. By the way, I really do. Again, I'm going to put Jadavian Clowney in this mock because it's 3-1, to one, but I really would not be surprised at all if a quarterback is taking any of its Bridgewater because I just, I just don't see them taking Manziel, but they could. And I don't think they trust Bortles as much as they do Bridgewater just because Rick Smith, Rick Smith attended Teddy Bridgewater against the University of Miami, um, the bowl game, the Russell Athletic Bowl. He was there for that game. And if you saw that game, Teddy Bridgewater just absolutely – Talk that that was probably yeah. the best game he ever played. I know, I know I know that's Miami, but the way he looked in that game, it, that's why I understand how people. I don't understand it. I don't get it. That's why I'm saying the way, that the way he looked in that game. It was like 
It was like an NFL player was playing a bunch of college kids. It was pretty bad. Now he was he just massacred fools. And Rick Smith was in attendance for that game, the Texans GM. So I just think this is one big smoke screen. I, mean, I could look like an absolute genius on Thursday, or I could just hear the Jadavian Clowney pick being read, and, and I, that wouldn't surprise me either. Uh, but yes, I, for now, I'll put Jadavian Clowney in this mock draft as the first overall pick, but that that's just my opinion. I do think, w- one thing I'll say with the Bridgewater thing that you're saying, I do think, now granted, I don't know if he'll fall that far, but I think the Texans could, we've seen this happen before, we've seen guys like Rodgers, guys like, like that drop before. I think you could see them go ahead and get Clowney and then try to get back in the draft uh, late if Bridgewater was to make that fall. Um, oh, yeah. oh, good call, Phil. I wouldn't, can be see that wouldn't be surprised. Wouldn't be surprised. I just know that. It, but I also I kind of see what you're saying too. I mean, he it's it's so weird. Like, w- there's going to be a quarterback that drops, and and it just looks like it's pointing towards Bridgewater being that guy. But um, we'll just see. We'll see if it ends up being him or not. But um, and I also. I also there's just like if, if you follow the Jeff Ireland rules of drafting, if you like someone, you wait until the absolute last possible minute to take him, which is awful. If you like that's something, stupid. that's the yeah. Jeff Ireland. That's that's why that's why Colin Kaepernick isn't quarterback for the Miami Dolphins right now. Um, if you like someone, chances are another GM with a team of scouts and a high football IQ probably likes him as well. So you really just got to take guy when you want him before you risk losing him. So, yes, I've heard this mentality before and I've heard this strategy and it's certainly possible and it certainly makes a lot of sense. But I just think that if that is their strategy, they're going to miss out on some of the guys that they want. But okay. um, all right. Second overall pick, the St. Louis Rams. We would consider trading this, but we're not going to do trades. So who would the Rams pick? Marquim, I'll start with you this time. If you had to guess, um, y'all not gonna agree with me, but uh, I really believe they draft Watkins here. I think that uh, if they keep this pick, I think that um, they want to really bulk up the wide receiving core and give uh, give um, Sam Bradford one last shot to really prove himself. And I think Stephen Bailey, uh, Tavon Austin. Sammy Watkins, how much more can you do it? I mean, if he don't do anything with that, he's not meant to be the quarterback. I think this is his last shot, and then they're going to draft Watkins here, I think. Eric? I'm going to go, I'm gonna go uh, Greg Robinson here. I feel like, um, don't the Rams also select at 13, if I, if I remember correctly? Yeah, they do. They do. Uh, I feel like this, for the reason of this draft being so deep and wide receivers, you can take someone that isn't Evans or Watkins at 13 and be very, very happy with that selection. Uh, but you don't have that same depth with the offensive line. I feel like Matthews or Robinson needs to go here. And I feel like Robinson's just a little bit better and fits into what Radford needs to do as a quarterback a little bit better. So I'm going to go Greg Robinson there. Phil. Uh, man, Eric, you took the words right out of my mouth because that's exactly what I was going to say about the receiving core. Um, wow, Sammy Watkins, you're not going to get a Sammy uh, at 13. I do think the, the Rams... Uh, it, now, my t- number one choice would be they trade this pick because I think they could get crazy value, especially if the Texans don't take Clowney. Um, this Rams pick could be huge. Um, but uh, I think they take Greg Robinson as well. I think they take the top uh, offensive lineman, and from what I know, that's the that's the guy I go with. So I think they take Greg, Greg Robinson, and, and uh, we'll get to it later, but the, the guy I see I – see, I see a receiver on the on this list that the Rams will take later. So. Um. Yeah. <sighs> I'm actually more inclined to go with Markeem and say Sammy Watkins, uh, mainly just because that's just that just seems to be how they draft. Just buy, get as many weapons as possible for the quarterback. But then that will make it a tie. So yes. Yeah. So what that, what that to do? to stick it to stick it to Markeem, <laughs> I'm gonna go with Greg Robinson as well. Plus, I think the team I think the team that trades into the spot if. Clowney is gone. Would get Greg Robinson over. Clowney. Oh yeah, yeah. I think if, I think if the Rams don't actually pick here, whoever it is, will pick Greg Robinson. So I'm just assuming the Rams will pick here. So we'll go with Greg Robinson just to make things clear. All right, uh, Phil. We'll start with you, Jacksonville Jaguars. Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay, this is this is an interesting one. Um, most people would think you know you got to go ahead and take your your your, your quarterback. I mean. I, 
I don't know. And and, and I'm looking down on the draft. Jags, of course, would have to trade back in for a quarterback later. Um, but I just think the Jags, they're building a team. If if the Jags want to be smart and and pull a Rams, um, now the Rams did get their quarterback to start off with. If we'll find out if that's their quarterback, you know, uh, basically after this season. But I mean, the Jags have to kind of. You know, is this a, is is this where they're going to go after their quarterback? I just think the quarterback's still depth, like the depth. If you, I mean, you can go after the fl- the flash and and Manziel. They didn't go after, and I know this isn't a great comparison, but they didn't get the flash and 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 uh, Tebow. I don't think they're going to try to go for Manziel here. Um, I actually think that they're going to go with uh, just trying to beast their their team as a whole. And I think they they select Sammy Watkins here. I think the Jags take a wide receiver. Um, just bulk, uh, bulk up here. Try to trade back in and get a, a Bridgewater or a, a, I don't know. I don't think Bortles will be available late, but somebody, if not Bridgewater, somebody down there that they might can get. Um, or if they don't take, like I said, I'm just picking a, a t- a, the best value here for the Jags, and I think Sammy's that that value. I, they could go defense, Khalil Mack, but I'm just going to lean towards Sammy. I think Jags could get off need a need an offensive weapon if they're not going to go quarterback. I think, uh, just to kind of switch up the order a bit, I'm going to say the pick here is Bridgewater only because Jed Fish, the Jaguars offensive coordinator, um, was the former offensive coordinator for the University of Miami. And I believe that Jed Fish saw that Louisville-Miami game. And if Jed Fish saw that Louisville-Miami game, just like how Rick Smith saw that Louisville-Miami game, then uh, I believe Jed Smith was also wild. But also mainly because their quarterback is fucking Chad Henney. Fuck that shit. But I refuse <laughs> to believe that they're going to go in with Chad Henney as a starting quarterback. I no, refuse they won't. to accept it. So I'm putting Bridgewater here as my pick. But the other two can speak their minds. Oh, man. I had a different. We're going to have four different choices. <laughs> That's fine. We That's might. fine. Yeah. Do that, that, that. Do that. That would please. be cool. That we'll would be cool. We'll discuss it. We'll go discuss ahead. it. Yeah. That makes it fun. Go. <laughs> like, like, like I, I thought, I think this is going to be Bortles right here. I think that he's going to be the first QB taken. Everybody's in love with him. Wow. Everybody thinks, you know, he's the best QB available. And, you know, he might well be. I think it's Bridgewater, but, you know, I think it's Bortles right here. Eric. All right. I don't want to confuse people um, because my pick right here is also Sammy Watkins. Yes! yes. Go, Eric. Okay, so, and, yeah. And, 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 and majority here's win. why. I think Khalil Mack doesn't fit in the Jaguar system. Right. And as high as I am on him and as high as the raw talent works, Khalil Mack will not work as a Jaguar. Um, I, I just get a weird feeling. And honestly, if I get a weird feeling if they take a quarterback here, it'd be Johnny Manziel. And so I, I don't think that – I think Johnny Manziel is a perfect fit for that exact reason. I mean, Jaguars lack star power. The Jaguars lack everything that makes an NFL franchise an NFL franchise in a sense. It feels like they're kind of AAA, and they have been for a while. Johnny Manziel immediately restores that. I can but, do that. I don't think they go in that direction. I think they trade back in and get a Garoppolo, a Bridgewater, or whoever falls, and they take Sammy Watkins here to replace him. All right. Well, that makes the decision easier. <laughs> I um, if, if the Jaguars do draft Sammy Watkins and Chad Henney wins the starting quarterback job, get ready for the Sammy Watkins huge draft bust articles yeah. to be released yeah. in a few weeks. If yeah. fucking Chad Henney's throwing the ball to him. Actually, well, I don't know. No, Black, Blackman's still good. I mean, he get he did he got numbers in the in the Jags offense. Yeah. Yeah, could you imagine if they had a quarterback? Oh my god! That's what I'm. Yes, I mean, you know. To be fair, with Chad Henney, he probably won't throw the ball past five yards. So maybe <laughs> Sammy Watkins will do some cool stuff after the catch. But yeah. no faith in no faith in Chad Henney's starting quarterback. All right, fourth one. I'm absolutely convinced that they take the Browns. I'm absolutely convinced they take Manziel here. I guess, yes, they could take Khalil Mack. They could take Mike Evans. But they cut they cut Brandon Whedon and fucking Jason Campbell after the season ended. They didn't even bother to keep one of them to go into the season. They cut both of those quarterbacks who were their two quarterbacks during the season after Brian Hoyer got hurt. They cut them both. Like, if that doesn't give you an indication that they're going – and I know they have another first-round pick, but they're going quarterback. They're going early. I think this is the guy for this franchise. It just seems like it seems like it's building to this. That's my pick. If I know I've said Bridgewater the two out of the past three times, but I think the Browns specifically would put Manziel above the other two. That's just me, though. Uh, um, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead because I, I actually agree with you. So instead of mixing it up, um, 
I, I think Manziel's easily going here. I think if somehow uh, – I know Eric mentioned this. If the Jacks somehow got Manziel, I think Bortles goes here. I think they're going quarterback. They're taking their quarterback. Um, the Browns are – I mean, hate on all you want, and, it's the, and the organization itself can't – you know, get if they could ever get things straight. But if they ever hit on a quarterback – that team could be that team could be scary. I mean, that defense is not is not a pushover. Um, the offense has its has its uh, components uh, there. Just need a quarterback. Um, I, I I think it's easy. They go Manziel and yeah, Manziel goes to die in Cleveland. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> Marquise, I think they should draft an offensive lineman, but. I'm convinced they take Manziel. Whichever quarterback is available here, like if, like you said, if the Jaguars take Manziel, I think they take Borders. I think they're going quarterback because they pretty much clean house on every quarterback they got. So, yeah, that's what I think. Eric? Uh, I guess my picks are over by this point. I take Khalil Mack here. I think that because of that second, because of that later round pick, uh, there's no point. I think I feel like that quarterback class is just strong enough the point in the late first round where you'll get value down there with whoever drops. And I feel that with Khalil Mack on the board at four, I, I could not pass on him. And I think they'd be stupid to do so, to be honest. Even though all, all signs are pointing towards Johnny Manziel, I feel like there needs to be a little bit of discrepancy there. All right. So... Yeah, yeah, you guys notice I haven't, I haven't said that name yet. What? Khalil Mack. Yeah, I haven't said I haven't said I haven't either. I haven't either. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Well, number five, the Oakland Raiders. <laughs> Markeem, I'll start with you. Uh, I don't think they take Bridgewater. Like I already said, Manziel and, and Bortles. I don't think they. I don't think they take Bridgewater. And uh, I know they aren't how Mike Evans from everything I hear. So I think if they don't trade this pick, this is Jake Matthews. Well, dang, Markeem, you just completely killed my pick. No, <laughs> no, because you know they, they always drive offensive linemen, and I right. think you know they you know they they do need them because dear God. But all right, y'all yeah. go ahead because I got to change my pick after I heard what you just said. You don't have to. Oh so, no, okay, I'm not. I, I, I'm, I, I, I'm I pick, my pick, my pick was Mike Evans. But, oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Eric, Eric. So I'm going to think. I'm going to take. It. I'm choosing Khalil Mack with every pick until he goes. <laughs> <laughs> not kidding. Well, um, it makes sense. Uh, I'm shocked he's here at five. To be completely honest. <laughs> I, 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 okay, so he's, there's no other reason. I'm sorry, Khalil Mack. Um, well, my pick is also Jake Matthews, more so because yes, Khalil Mack. And I'll tell you right now, I'm picking Khalil Mack for the Falcons, who had like the worst defensive line in all football last year. Yeah, um, but you have to remember, Eric, also that the Raiders just lost Jared Veld Healer. Veld Healer, Veld Healer. The Raiders just lost their best player, who was on the offensive line, and they need to replace him. So, when you lose your best player on an offensive line that was already awful, and you lose your best player on the line, it really is a priority to replace him. That's why I would also say Jake Matthews. I'll, I'll, agree, I'll agree with you on that, but I feel like this is a Glenn Dorsey situation where, to the point where, and, and I believe in Cleo Mack this much. If he's there at five, you need to make a pick for the franchise when there's someone that great off, that great still on the board. Don't do it. Don't do it. Well, let's so, see. This is a pair of Khalil Mack to Glenn Dorsey. Did that just happen here? <laughs> Did you just do that a on Glenn our show? Dorsey type of situation. As a prospect, <laughs> absolutely, I just compared the two. As a okay, player, right, right, yeah, not. Yeah. That's true. As a prospect, Glenn Dorsey was supposed to be the best thing ever. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and, I'm very high, and I'm very high on Khalil Mack. Their needs are elsewhere, and if, if Watkins somehow falls to five, I say they take him. Well, let's see. Yeah. Let's see if Phil. Let's see what Phil's pick is. Maybe he forces a tie and he forces further discussion. Phil. Uh, no, sorry to be anti him. I'm going with Jake Matthews because my that was my tor- uh, My original pick was that the Raiders you know, Al Davis was going to roll over in his grave because he couldn't take Sammy Watkins. Um, so he had to go with the next best wide receiver, and that was Mike Evans. But um. Since since Markeem threw out some knowledge that I did not was not aware of about Mike them not being high on Mike Evans, um, and I don't think they take uh, the next best receiver out after him. Um, I, I just I think they got to take offensive line, so I go with Jack, Jake Matthews. So Raiders select J- Jake Matthews based on that. Um, I I will say this: this is the most unpredictable first draft first yes. round in history. 
in history. Yeah. We now, we can look like complete geniuses or complete idiots. Right. That's, <laughs> so Thursday. That's what makes it fun. Yeah. I love Mont. It's, um it's fun. Atlanta Falcons, um, Eric, we already know your pick. I'm agreeing with you. I'm picking Khalil Mack here too just because that Falcons, the linebackers and the D-line, just atrocious last year. Like no pressure whatsoever on the quarterback. So they need what? someone like that. So yep. I'm going – I would definitely go – I think Khalil – I think of all the teams so far, the top six, the one that needs Khalil Mack the most is the Atlanta Falcons. So that's why I think it also falls into place that he's getting picked here. In or real – in real time, Atlanta might trade up to the Rams and draft Khalil Mack there. That would right. not surprise me at all. So yeah, if I was, Khalil Mack is still sitting at six with the Falcons. <laughs> you know how happy you'd make that entire franchise. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I tend to agree with you both. I think he's perfect here. I think this is a Keith Brooking type situation. Yeah, I mean, like real shit. I remember how Keith Brooking accidentally fell at him years ago, and they had him for years. Same type of deal. Uh, Phil, not that it matters, but would you have done the same thing? Oh <laughs> uh, well, let's see, I could say something that's irrelevant. No, actually, I would have said the same thing, and I think, uh, I guess, it was Eric that just said it. Um, I think that I can see the Falcons trading up to number two and taking Khalil Mack. I, I think. Oh, no, you said that. Okay, yeah, yeah. it was you. That's right. Um, I could, I could see them trading up to two and taking Clowney if if Clowney's not going one. Um, but since we're you know going non trades and everything, easily Khalil Mack. He's still on the board. It's easy pick for Falcons. They move on. Bucks are on the clock. <laughs> I mean. It's not a hard decision for them uh, here, if that's how it rolled out. All right, number seven, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, it's obvious. It's Mike Evans. It's Mike Evans. They did just, Best wide receiver available, Mike Evans. They did just lose Mike Williams. Uh, Mike Evans. Eric? Mike Evans, absolutely. Bringing in Josh McCown, he needs a, he needs a big weapon. I think Mike Evans is perfect for him. Phil? I wasn't going to say Mike Evans. It's, I mean, obviously, it's going to be uh, unless there's a tie. I, I, I would say I don't even know who it, who I'm looking on the board. Uh, I say they take another offensive lineman, um, or they trade down. I don't. I don't really see anybody in my in my my knowledge that would go with the Bucks. So I mean, I'll go with the consensus, whatever it ends up being. But I would say that I'm trying to find the next best offensive lineman. I don't we even have know, a list in the chat. I know, well, I'm not looking Describing. at that. I'm looking at. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'll say this: Taylor Luan. Like if you want to go that way here, I can see that working out. Okay, so Taylor Lewin. But um, I, I actually, I would pick. Normally, I, I'm I'm half-hearted between Mike Evans and uh, Bridgewater Bortles. I just think that it's clear that Mike Lennon is not going to be on the roster. I think he's gone, and I don't think I don't know they, why he was fine. He yeah, was fine towards yeah. the end. It was weird. It was weird. Like just Lovey like, doesn't like him. Lovey doesn't like him. It's weird. It's weird. But they're bringing in Josh McCown. He very well could start. He had a great season last year, but I don't think they bring in Josh McCown without expecting to bring in someone else. And I don't think you bring in – unless you do the Dolphins draft logic of get the veteran and then draft the quarterback in the third round and see if that works out. The Dolphins tried this mentality for 10 years, and it didn't work until they ended up just flat out drafting Ryan Tannehill in the first round, and that's produced the best results since then. But um, because I, I, either way I would lose because it would be 2-1-1. to one to one. But I would pick a quarterback here. Not, don't know which one. But the pick is Mike Evans. And, and kid, it's been longer than ten years. When did Marino retire? Ninety nine. Ninety nine. Ninety nine. Uh, well, we drafted, but we great. also we also drafted Tanny in two thousand twelve. That's so. thirteen years. <laughs> Mike Evans off the board. All right, Minnesota Vikings. I I'm just gonna say right now. I'm convinced this is a quarterback. Uh, I, I was about to say. I know this is easy for me, but all know. right, here, uh, Eric, start with you. This it's is not also so easy very for me. But go ahead. This, this is also very easy for me. This is Blake Bortles. Yeah. Um, I think he's a perfect fit with Minnesota. I think that with a back like Peterson, having a quarterback like a Blake Bortles would open up that offense immensely with that arm. I feel that Bridgewater is not a good fit here. I feel that Bortles is perfect. Uh, Phil, uh, that's my pick as well. I was about to say he's Eric said it before. I could say it. Blake Bortles, easy. That's my pick. That's the next best quarterback on the board for me, so that's where I'm going. Blake Borders to the Vikings. This is Bridgewater for me. I think that I actually disagree with Eric completely. Can't believe that. But, uh, yeah, I, I think he's a better fit here. I think that uh, just him, you know, 
being uh being more experienced throwing the ball you know vertically, which is what they need now with Greg Jennings being there and all that stuff. I, I think he, he he's better. He's better for this situation. I, all right. Um, well, it comes to you, Big Rat. I also think Bridgewater is better oh, for the wow. situation, <laughs> but. But I do think they're going to draft Bortles just because. Oh, okay. Does this stick it to me again? No, no, no. <laughs> um, all the reports I've read are just that Zimmer and North Turner are in love with Blake Bortles. Ma- yeah. Many mock drafts have him as the pick, and trust me, I I put I put Bridgewater as my first overall. I mean, I I would love, I would have probably put I put Bridgewater with the Texans, with the Jaguars, with the Buccaneers. But um, I just think the Viking staff likes him more. This is a prediction, not a who should they. I, mean, I guess it's, it's a mix of both. It's a mix of what they're going to do and what they should do. But I just feel very strongly that they value Blake Bortles higher. So my prediction here is Blake Bortles. Um, All right. but so I also – I would draft Bridgewater personally. But since it's a 2-2 t- two, two tie, I feel my indecisiveness can push it to Blake Bortles. Which is – and by the way, let me say that. Whoever does not, whoever's a quarterback that has not been drafted by this point is going to fall, um, unfortunately. Uh, that's I think that's why they have Bridgewater falling in so many mocks because yeah. the Vikings love Bortles. But if you, Vikings draft Teddy Bridgewater. That's that's the right thing to do. But whatever. Uh, Buffalo Bills. Let me also say that they're not going to do this, but they should draft a quarterback here, and not just because of the EJ Manuel hate on this podcast, but this team is very talented. One of the few holes they have is at the quarterback position, and that's obviously a big enough hole to probably prevent them from making the playoffs. But this team has a lot of talent on receiver, at running back, on defense. Like, the defensive line is one of the most underrated in the NFL, and uh, the the linebacker core got a lot better with Kiko Alonso's last year. Like, I just think this team is very talented, and I just feel that the only thing holding them back is the quarterback position. And even though you spent the first-round draft pick on it last year, who cares? Do it again. But I know they won't. But that would be what I would do. So you so you take Bridgewater? No, 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 no. Uh, I, I I'm not going to put a quarterback here. Um, okay. I just I'm not convinced at all that it's going to happen. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Eric, go first. This work gets hard. Uh, I'm going to go yeah. Taylor. Lu- I'm going to go Taylor Luan here. Um, I I want to give EJ Manuel one more shot. I feel like he has a, a same type of Sam Bradford type. So I feel like giving him an offensive weapon would be the best thing here. Uh, I feel that like they have they have other wide receivers you can come in here. I'm gonna go Taylor Lewan here. I feel like offensive line is gonna be a, a safe pick. Uh, I'm a I'm a million percent convinced this will be an offensive lineman. So like like Eric said, I'm gonna go with Lewan here because I think that uh one of their few weaknesses is offensive line kid. So yeah yeah. Uh, Phil, let me see. I'm look. I'm thinking. <laughs> I, I I would go offensive line again, so I'll go I'll go with the I would go with the guy that they that you guys said since that's the consensus who's the top guy in left. So I'll go with Taylor Luan too, because uh, I would go offensive line. So that's. The, I mean, I don't know the offensive line positions enough to right, make a better decision. Right. So I'll say Taylor Luan as well. So that's the pick number ten, Detroit Lions. Ooh. Yeah, again, not, not, it's going to get tougher now. It's going to get tougher now. Uh, All right. Um, who wants to go? Who wants to go first? I, it's not me. me. <laughs> I, have, I have a pick, but um, I'm not gonna right. say it. No, 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 Ricky, you go first. Um, okay, my my guess here is that um, let me okay, okay, hold on. Before I say this, let me confirm. My my pick was gonna be Anthony Barr. Um, I just I don't I can't confirm this for sure. Uh, but the Lions. Their secondary and their linebacker core last year was just – it was very disappointing to me. And I just felt that they could have really, really, really could have done a lot better. And I feel that getting Anthony – getting Anthony – what you call it? Uh, getting Anthony Barr here can correct that problem because he's just so athletic. Like who I forget the outside linebacker they have. Ashley Palmer I think his name is who I remember just seeing tape of him and not thinking he was that good. And I just think that – I just think that Anthony Barr has so much – potential he's the type of guy that i'm not saying he's he doesn't have it now but i just think i see big things for him in the future and i think he has the mold that a lot of nfl coaches really love and i think if you're the lions you gotta you gotta do something to fix the back end of that defense it's it's a real problem um the offense is perfectly fine almost every part of it 
Um, the the defensive ta- the defensive line is fantastic, but their secondary and their linebacker core are suspect. And I don't like Dennard enough to pick him here. And I don't think any of the safety safety guys are good enough to be drafted here either. I think this is very possible that the Lions trade down because I just think the safeties. I wouldn't draft a safety at, at ten. I know you guys wouldn't. And I don't trust Dennard or even Justin Gilbert enough to draft him at 10, so I would just fix the next part of the defense that needs fixing, which is getting Anthony Barr. But that's just me. Um, I guess I'll go next. Um, I'm taking Justin Gilbert here. And here's why. I think he's a great divisional fit in the NFC North. Against the quarterbacks that he would face, I feel like all the strengths are highlighted where he could kind of expose them a little bit. Um, I, I feel like Barr isn't... Uh, I feel like, yeah, with how the Panthers have taken the Luke Keekley, you know, taking a linebacker can really change the team. But I, I feel like Gilbert's a better pick here for him. Not surprised. They they had some pretty – Darius Slay, who was their draft pick last year, didn't have a good season. And Dwight Benley, their other cornerback, also had a bad year. So. Right, right. Okay. This this shit is hard. Yeah. Uh, flip Flip a coin to me. Between Gilbert and Dennard, I, I believe they take a secondary player because that was hands down their biggest weakness. Like my God, my God. Years, so I, I, th- I think flip a coin, they take one of them. But I would take Gilbert. But I, something tells me they take Dennard here. So Phil, deciding vote. All right. So who, who's what now? Deciding vote. Y'all all have two people have Gilbert, right? No, it's Dennard, Gilbert, and Anthony Barr. Okay. Deciding vote, so I can pick one of those three or pick another one and be a three-way tie. No, I'm going with. Uh, I already clicked it on my little mock draft I got right here. Uh, Justin Gilbert is who I'm going with, the top cornerback um, off the board. Uh, so they need a cornerback bad, and and uh, I was actually going to go ha ha Clint Dix, but since you guys were going between Gilbert and and uh, uh, Clinton uh, Dix, Clinton Dix, I think and like- Dennard, so. I went with one of those. Clinton Dix, I think, is a good pick. I just, I'm just not sure if at ten they're going to take him. They very right, well may. Right. They very right. well may. And that's what I did. I thought, I thought it was a little too soon, so I just went with Gilbert. That's uh, why. So. That's why I think it's more likely that just looking at like the receivers that are still on the board and the defensive tackles that are on the board, I think it's likely that a team like the the Bears or the Maybe not the Bears, but like the Steelers. The Steelers would be a great example. I think a team like the Steelers could trade up here easily and get a receiver or get someone else in the defense to replace some of the talent that they lost in the offseason. I think that's a likely scenario. But again, we don't predict that. And I like I like the Justin Gilbert pick. I think it makes sense. Next we get to the most boring team in the NFL. <laughs> my least, classics. My, my least favorite franchise in the NFL, the Tennessee Titans, who just lost Chris Johnson. To make them even more nondescript. Um, if you need to I know, go first. You want, yeah. uh, and it, someone go first while I look up their needs. I'm not I, sure I'll what go. they are. Um, I think they draft Anthony Barr here just because I think he'll be here at 11. And you can't pass him at 11. I, I, th- I think they draft him here. Um, I also have Anthony Barr here. Um, I think that, you know, they need that needs kind of everywhere. You know, they don't lack they lack an identity. So I think the best player left on the board here at this point is Anthony Barr, and I think they take him. Well, this is gonna make it boring because that's also who I have. I also have Anthony Barr, best like kind of like what Eric said, best player. Ow, best player there. Um, so, and it's just I feel like they need somebody like that. So, I'm currently in the process of um, organizing on two separate screens. Uh, PFFs uh, for 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 each team, uh, but the Titans, yeah, yeah, it, the, the pick makes sense. Uh, so that's Anthony Barr is the pick. Next, we get to the New York Football Giants. If they were smart, they'd pick a quarterback, but that's also not going to happen. <laughs> uh, Trey Mark would Trey like Mark, that. Trey Mark is uh, wetting his pants right now because you said that. I mean, come on, do you really trust Curtis Painter to take over once Eli gets benched? Come on. <laughs> Or Eli wins the Super Bowl this year. Both very possible. Yeah, it could be either one. Uh, okay, but the Giants, uh, just taking a look at at, uh, at who's on the board right now. Um, right. I, re- I really, really think that this team is probably going to go – this team's probably going to go offensive line. Their offensive line was god-awful last year. Like, so many – 
so many, so many players that just that just really, really struggled. If this was if this was the NFL of old, I would take a running back here, but because they obviously very much need that. But I don't think they're gonna draft one just because I don't think I don't think they draft the running back this early. I don't think anybody drafts a running back this early anymore. Um, I think under normal circumstances, for sure they go like Carlos Hyde here. But I just don't see that happening in today's NFL, unfortunately. So my pick would be that they they put someone on the line. Um, I guess Zach Martin, who's projected to go number 12 right now, would be my pick to go here. I think it's best available offensive of lineman, so Zach Martin. That simple. Because, oh, my God, do you know how many times you like got sacked last year? Dear God. That poor guy. As much as I love seeing Eli getting sacked, and I, I truly do <laughs> love seeing that, um, I'm with the consensus here, Zach Martin at 12. Um, they need to help him out bad. I mean, good good grief. Not as bad as Ryan Tannehill, a league-leading 60 sacks. Awful, man. This is this <laughs> horrible. <laughs> I hope he doesn't get card. <laughs> So who you got, Phil? You ain't said nothing? Uh, I'm going with offensive line as well. And since the consensus of Zach Martin is the next guy available, so I'm going to go with offensive line, Zach Martin. They definitely need offensive line because uh, Eli was on his back constantly. All right. Uh, the Rams go again here. We have them taking Greg Robinson in the, fir- in the with their first pick. Uh, me personally, I think I agree a lot with the logic we heard behind the Sammy Watkins pick earlier. Um, and I think – that's part of their plan. I think they go receiver here. As far as which one, I don't know which one the front office likes more between Beckham, Cooks, Lee Robinson, Lattimore's. I'm just going to say Odell Beckham because he's projected to go 14 anyways. Uh, that would be my pick. But I, I, I don't have inside info on the receivers that the Rams like. So, yeah. My pick is BPA receiver, which in this case is Odell Beckham, according to our rankings. My my pick is a uh, receiver, but I'm going with Marquise Lee. I just think that's that's uh that's the guy that I would I would pick next. Um, I don't know much about everybody else, so that's probably why. But um, I'm going to go to Marquise Lee. I just think the Rams take him here. I at some point at some point you can go with who you think's the better receiver. Yeah. Remember, part yeah. of this is also who we would draft. Right, right, and I, as I said, I, I would go to Marquise Lee just based off knowledge and things like that. But uh, yeah, so I'm going Marquise Lee. Uh, all right, um, you want to go, Eric? You want me to go? I think my pick might end up being uh, decided uh, factor. Uh, a, a, a non decided actually, the, the exact opposite, a non decided oh. factor. Um, so I'm going to go Allen Robinson here. He is third on my board. I'm going to stay true to that. Uh, he would be my best available right here. So I'm going to stay true to that and go Allen Robinson. We all four of us are going to have different picks. I actually got high, high Clinton Dix here. Wow. I think that. Uh, I think they need to help that back into that defense too, because I already said they were going to pick Watkins. So, I mean, you so could, now, yeah, but now, like, now you gotta adjust. Yeah, you gotta. Adjust yeah, you adjust. That. Now you're you're the Rams. Okay, but I, I, I still think I Fine. still think they click. I still think they pick Diggs. That wouldn't surprise me. And the Rams did just lose after he had an awful season. They did just lose the Cortland Finnegan, who's now a Miami Dolphin. Uh, so I can definitely understand that. The Rams, I can't show it to you guys, but if you look at their um, if you look at their PFF ratings for their defense. They have four players in the green, all four on the defensive line. Three players average and ten players in the reds, most of them defensive backs. So with Cortland Finnegan being the worst. So I definitely understand the Clinton Dix pick. Me personally, because I just think they, they believe so strongly in Sam Bradford. I just and they know that this is the year that this is make or break for Bradford. That's why I think they pick receiver. Um, but I think the best way to consolidate this is for me to change my pick from Odell Beckham to Marquise Lee because I do think Marquise Lee is the third best receiver in this class. And I only picked Beckham because he was third on the board. But if we're getting to the point that we pick who we think is the third best receiver available, I would go Marquise Lee. So I think that makes right. that makes Marquise Lee. Goes to the Rams. That makes Marquise actually, Lee. Actually, Markeem, uh, if you had to choose between Beckham, uh, Robinson, and Lee, who would you choose? Uh, Probably Lee. All right, so that confirms it, yeah. All right, cool. Marquise Lee's the pick. 
Marquis, you got your boy Marquis Lee getting no catches whatsoever thanks to awful Sam Bradford. I know, I know, I know, I okay. know. Right now, right now, you have Sammy Watkins catching passes from Chad Henney, Marquis <laughs> Lee from Sam Bradford, and Mike, Mike Evans, Evans from, from Josh McCown. McCown. Yeah, Josh McCown. <laughs> this is going to be called the most overrated wide receiver class ever by the end of the year. <laughs> All oh, right, man. we got Chicago Bears. I think this pick. Is is Clinton Dix? I think this team needs some any godforsaken help on defense. It's either Clinton Dix or C.J. Mosley or some like they need something. They fucking got massacred last year. They were almost Redskins bad. Like they were Thanks. just you know staying true to you. They they were the worst last year. They were they may they may have had the worst defense in the NFL. They had a they had a negative 185 overall PFF rating. That's just, just fucking crazy. They have no players on defense. None. Not one in the green. Everybody was in the dirt red. Everybody. They had like the worst run defense in the NFL, the worst pass defense in the NFL. Like, I think and I they signed uh Lamar Houston um from from the Raiders to take care of their pass rush concerns. So I think that helps for that. I think the pick here is Clinton Dix or or CJ Mosley, but that's just me. Wants to go. Oh. Um, I guess I'll go next. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm going to take Aaron Donald here. I get um, that. Yeah. Uh, for the, a lot of those same reasons, you have to go defensive here. Um, and I think he's just the best defensive player left on the board. As high as I am on Clinton Dix, I think Donald's a game changer. And I think Donald fits into what the Bears system needs to do. Um, and I feel like the other two positions of linebacker and secondary are deeper. So you take Donald here. Uh, Phil... <laughs> Phil, Hakeem, anyone? I'm thinking, oh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I, okay. Well, I, I'll go ahead. I got Donald. I think that he's the best defensive player left. Uh, com- comparable to Dominican Sue. They need help. There you go. Phil? Um, I want to go random here. I, I honestly think they need they need they need some cornerback help. Um. Shit, so, anything, 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 Phil. really, anything, really. So, <laughs> I, well, I'll say this: Who's the top def- in your in your guys' minds? Who's the top defensive guy left? I would say, uh, I was gonna. The top defensive Donald. guy is Donald. The top Donald, quarterback okay. is Dak. Okay. Uh, we'll go. We'll go with the line. We'll. Go, I'll go with Donald. I, I I get that. I was gonna pick Donald for the Steelers, so I, understandable for him to go to the Bears. Uh, next, we got the Steelers. I you think said it. Yeah, I, I I think this is Clinton Dix. They just lost Ryan Clark. Uh, I I think this is Clinton Dix. Or 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 Mosley. I could see that one too. But uh, I think it's I, Clinton I, Dix. I think this is dinner because uh, really? yeah, they they need secondary help, man. And yeah, that's why they're getting. Just, just, so they just lost Ryan Clark, who was a corner slash safety. Dinner could probably play corner slash safety. So ah, I see. Nice, nice, nice adjustment nice there. Adjustment. I, I guess I'm so low on Denner that I have to go hit Clinton Dix here. I think mean, Clinton Dix is a good fit. I think the style he plays goes really, really well into the Steelers' defense. So I'm gonna go Clinton Dix. Well, my pick is irrelevant, but um, I'm going C.J. Mosley. Um, I thought about going there with the Bears, but. Uh, I went with Aaron, Aaron Donald instead. I think C.J. Mosley, they, they need a linebacker. They're missing that James Harrison experience there. I don't know if C.J. Mosley fits that mold, really. So, um, But I think they need to go linebacker here, and I think that uh, that's their guy. But obviously he's not going. So so we got four different players? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, no, because y'all both said Denner, didn't you? No, 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 Pitt. not Denner. Di- I mean, uh, Ha Ha, Ha Ha. Yes, Eric and I both said uh, Clinton Dix. So that's the pick. Oh, okay. Clinton okay. Dix this year. They do – they do. They really badly need a need a new inside linebacker, though. Uh, but yes, yeah, so, so I I completely understand C.J. Mosley, but I just think that that secondary also just got torched. So I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna type in. Did you type in Hashan or Haha? Just type Haha. Yes. Come on. There we go. That's how it's gotta be. Ha Clinton Dix. All right. The Cowboys. Uh, they they need. They, these are a also lot. guys that need. They're very much like the Bears. They need something. All right, uh, I'm going to go first. Go for it. I think this, I think this is dinner because the secondary is so bad. Yeah, so bad. Like he's at a point where I I know they have Brandon Carr. 
I know they have Mo Claymore. I get all this, but just keep trying till something works. My God. Plus, they, is, like, what they, you say? They could have Denner do the switch, like you were proposing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have him go to safety or something. My God. It is ghastly. What do y'all know? Remember, remember, remember Calvin Johnson set the record yes. for receiving yards. And then the next week, then they give up 200 yards to someone. It's fucking terrible. Yes. They're... Jo- I, I, Josh I, McCown looked like an all pro quarterback against them. They got to go I'll, corner. Yeah. I guess or, I'll go or next some year. sort of secondary. Right. Eric? I guess I'll go next here. And um, I'm pulling a shot right here. This one's Bridgewater right here. Um, wow. I I feel like they need some sort of spark, and I feel like Jerry Jones is looking for that spark so badly to the point if Manziel is the one he drops here, I guarantee Manziel will make it a sixteen. And so I really feel like Bridgewater is enough that spark, and I feel like with how high rated he is by everyone else here, and I feel like he's a great player. Um, and, I, and I'm, I'm just so low on Dennard. Uh, if, if they go secondary here, I really feel it's Kyle Fuller, but uh, I don't see that happening. So I'm going to go Teddy Bridgewater. Wow. You really don't like Dennard, do you? <laughs> he he likes no. less than I do. <laughs> uh, no, I, uh, to be honest, I, I, can't even say, I can't even say that this year is better than Dennard, but, <laughs> he, he, uh, but, I, 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 uh, but I think Dennard's better than this year. But, Phil? Uh, um. I'm going with uh, I I agree with Markeem. Um, I I will say one one thing I'll say here is uh, with what Eric said, I think that uh, that if Manziel's here, Jerry Jones couldn't get his pick in fast enough. <laughs> He's not gonna be here. Um, I don't know if he does that with Bridgewater. Um, I could see I wouldn't be totally shocked, but I don't think he does it. I think he goes and gets another defensive guy uh, or an offensive guy. I actually had one mock draft when I was kind of playing around with it. I actually had him going uh, receiver, but I'm going to ch- – I think they need cor- – they need what they really need. So if I'm the Cowboys, they take cornerback here. And uh, the best guy from what you guys are saying is Dennard, so I'll go with Dennard. Now, now, now here's the funny thing. You notice how we say Jerry Jones couldn't get his pick in fast enough. Remember before we were talking about the coaches, the coaches right. making the picks. Now he's <laughs> Jerry Jones. Right. That's that's the problem with the damn Cowboys. That's it the is. problem. It is. It's the same thing. What's wrong with the Raiders? <laughs> I mean, I was, I'm sorry to say it, like great Al Davis, but until that whole thing was gone, was done, there's no way that you know. Um, I like the Bridgewater pick. I think it's ballsy. Um, I, and I do agree. With Man- but the thing is, I don't think Manziel falls out of the top five. I'm convinced. I don't think he drops at all. I. I'm so convinced the Browns take him, like so convinced to the point right. that I think they pass on Khalil Mack. So, um, but for this pick, I do agree with these. So I'm going to go with Dennard as well, making him the official pick of YouTube take. Uh, I can also see Calvin Pryor here. I could definitely see that. But um, that, that they just, they need to add in as many bodies as possible. And I think Dennard, especially under the position switch ideal, can, can be helpful. Yes, I know that we don't like him as much as previous number one cornerback prospects in the draft, but he's still a first rounder. Like, you know, we still yeah. got to like him at some level. So. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> God damn, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He really doesn't like him. Uh, I, I just think, he, I think he's pretty overrated. I mean, he's, he's like the fourth best cornerback in the draft, and I, I, I probably will choose him at some point. Should he drop more, but... Like, I don't have to he, do that he, now. So thank he God. does not. He does not play how he should. That's that's no, my doesn't. biggest pet peeve about him. That's still so I, pretty to hate him this much. That you'll have. I, I just don't think it's going to translate to an NFL game very well at all. And switching positions, good luck. But no. You know, like people change their game, right? Like coaches, players get coached up all the time, right? Right. Yeah, I know. So, we're just talking about how they are now. Fair enough. Right. This is all hypothetical. I feel if he goes to Dallas, he's going into a bad situation. I'm well, also anybody Reds- going to Dallas. Well, I'm also <laughs> a huge Redskins fan, so I think that any person who goes to Dallas is going into a, huge, into a bad situation. Well, that's actually the truth outside of being a Redskins fan. Right. <laughs> Mel, Kuyper, Mel Kuyper actually just – I'm just going over Mel. Mel and Todd McShay did a combined mock draft. Right. Very similar to ours. Um, and uh, Mel, Mel had the Rams also picking Sammy Watkins. And uh, Jake Matthews. Yeah, we, we did a pretty good job here, if I do say so myself. Um, okay, so next we got next we got the uh, 
in the seventh. The Ravens. The Ravens, yes. The Baltimore Ravens. This, this one is really hard because I think their biggest need is strong safety. But do you take Jimmy Ward right here? I, okay, <sighs> so uh, I go to college in the Baltimore area. I think I should start here for that reason. Um, I think the pick here is Eric Ebram. Um, oh, I, really? <laughs> Eric really steals my pick again? <laughs> Eric is so, on me and Eric are on fire. Here's, here's what I think. That was my pick, too. Um, don't, they stab, don't they stab Dennis Pitta? And they, and they signed Owen Daniels. He, they lost Dennis Pitta, though. He, to, uh, no, Dennis, Dennis Pitta. Pitta. Dennis Pitta and... Uh, to injury, to injury. Well, didn't he get hurt this and, last year? And Ed Dixon is now gone as well. And Owen um, Daniels. So yeah. after Dennis Pitt so is he, not gone. No, I didn't say he's gone. They hurt. They lost him to injury last year. Oh, didn't fine. They? But I yeah, so. that Dennis. Well, he, uh, uh, well, here's the thing. I'm staying with Eber no matter what. Um, I, I in recent last weeks I met Ravens beat writer for the Baltimore Sun, Jeff Rayback, and he talked to me about a couple of things, and one of them was the Ravens, you know, need weapons around Joe Flacco, and I feel like as much as I like Robinson here. I feel like they're content with uh, Torrey Smith and, uh, and you know, Steve and Smith, Jacoby Steve Jones. Smith and Steve Smith. And they just got Steve Smith as well. So I feel like they need to go tight end and get their difference maker in Ebron. Even with Pitta? Yeah. Uh, All right. Well, <laughs> well you, you heard me. I saw my pick was going to be Eric Ebron before he even said that. So I'm sticking with it. Markeem, who was your pick again? I guess Jimmy Ward. That was my pick because they need they need a strong safety. Uh, my pick was gonna be uh, um, on the off on the offensive line somewhere because they fucking that line. Talk about lines last year that also weren't bad. Joe Flacco sacked second most in the NFL behind um, behind uh, Ryan Tannehill. Um, and honestly, Newsom's not an idiot. He knows he needs to fix that. So I would have picked like Xavier Suafilo or some of the, one of those guys. Uh, even Morgan Moses, maybe. That would be my pick, but Eric Ebron's the pick, according to these two already, so it doesn't matter. All right. Eric, Eric LeBron. All right. Now, I was going to pick Ebron for the Jets. So for the, yeah, I was too. So this, this is just like a fucking Aaron Donald. So for the Jets, I'm just going to pick the next receiver on our board. Who is it? It's either Allen Robinson or Odell Beckham Jr. Um... I've heard the Jets are in love with Odell Beckham Jr., so that would be my pick. That same here. Same here. They need a they need a receiver, and I was gonna go with. I was just gonna ask, but see, I was gonna look at the board and see who was the top one left. I, and I haven't Odell. seen it. I haven't seen enough of either to figure out who's better myself. I know right. Markeem and Eric right. have their own opinions, but I, I've heard the Jets are in love with Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, and that that makes it three one because I'm still gonna go with Robinson. But I've heard the same thing about the Jets, so. I could definitely see that happening, so back into the pick at 18. All right. Miami Dolphins. <laughs> okay. First of our teams. First of our teams. I promise you right now this pick is C.J. Mosley, for sure. For sure. It, he, he's he's still on our board, right? Yes, he is. He's still on our yep. board. It's kind of crazy he's still on our board, but yes. Then uh, I'm going to C.J. Not really. Not really. He got hurt. Yeah. A lot of people. That's He would be top five if he didn't get hurt. With Zach Martin gone and with Taylor Lewin gone, I – Promise you, and with Justin Gilbert, who they also like, gone. This pick is for sure, for sure. C.J. Mosley, not uh, a question. I, I agree, C.J. Mosley. I would agree, and I'm gonna agree with that too. Uh, I think C.J. Mosley is the only pick here for the uh, Dolphins. Should this play out this way? Yeah. Obviously, things change, and obviously, Glor knows the draft could. For all we know, the draft could be extremely different from this. But I'm just saying, in its current form, the pick here is C.J. Mosley. Okay, well, I was going offensive line because your, your line is yeah, garbage. The guys, the guys but, uh, in the line they like are gone. If, if if Zach Martin was here, Zach Martin would probably be the pick, but he's gone. Uh, but I mean, like I said, I don't know who's left if they're even uh, if they would even take an offensive line. And in besides, here, but, remember we signed we signed Brandon Albert and we signed a few other scrubs to so, play guard. But I mean, I, I I lose regardless. I could say John Henry, and I still lose. So it does. But we'll uh, say John Henry. We'll John go Henry. <laughs> the Dolphins still the still working. The, we'll the, the, the Dolphins team. select their 500th quarterback that fails. <laughs> for the Cardinals, for the Cardinals, I'm going Teddy Bridgewater here. Um, it's clear that Carson Palmer doesn't have much time left. It's and as bad as that offensive line is, a the top offensive line prospects are already gone, and b. 
they're getting Jonathan Jonathan um, Jonathan Cooper back, who didn't play last season because he broke his leg in the preseason. Who was their number one overall pick last year? So I think that's the first round talent that's going to fix the offensive line. And I just I'm going to pick Bridgewater for every team until there I see until there's a team that clearly doesn't have a quarterback issue. I'm going to pick Bridgewater until he's drafted. So I'm picking Bridgewater here. All right, this should be a quarterback, right? It should be right. This is what's going to shock y'all, though, because I know they love this dude. I'm actually going to go with Derek Carr right here. Yeah. Because because I know for a fact that they're in love with Derek Carr for some odd reason. So I'm actually going to put him right here, which means in, in my mock draft, you know what I mean? It, like, since we hadn't picked him yet, I wouldn't even have Bridgewater in the first round, which is crazy. Unless he got traded in, right? Yeah. yeah. Um. So I have Bridgewater here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I understand what the Cardinals see in Derek Carr, but no. But at the same time, I don't. Uh, they also he, they also probably don't expect. I mean, maybe now they do, but I'm sure when they were evaluating Carr, they didn't expect Bridgewater to fall to them. Yeah, um, man. I, I I just see so much more to Bridgewater here. I, I think the Carr is maybe like the fifth best pro- quarterback prospect in the draft. So maybe here's the shocker with uh, Garoppolo, but I'm going to take the safe pick in Bridgewater. And uh, as I, I was reminded by my team, uh, with Derek Carr, um, I do I do remember them saying that they they were really high on him. Uh, but I'm I'm gonna go with the pick that I would choose here, and the best quarterback on the board for me would be Teddy Bridgewater. So, yeah, Teddy. Bridgewater is a Cardinal. This is this is where I've had him. Actually, this is where I've had him. And any time I look at it, I have him going to the Cardinals. So. And this would be a good fit for him. I think Larry Fitzgerald is the perfect guy for this dude. If he didn't yeah. go, if he didn't go here, if he didn't go, I was gonna say if he didn't get, if the if it wasn't the Cardinals, uh, the, the I would have picked the Jags. Might could trade back in and get him but based it, on our pending a team not trading back in. I would have picked the Bengals to get him. Really, that's uh, a team. That's a team that has, also has almost every single aspect of their team set except the quarterback position. I, 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 I think I think next year is when that happened, not this year, but next year. And the, yeah, they got to oh. get one. Here, I think. But. Well, in, in my original mock draft, I have Mac going four, and I have them, and I have another quarterback, which actually ends up being Garoppolo being taken at twenty six. So. Wait. Oh shit! I put the Colts here. I completely forgot that the Browns were uh, were still picking here. Okay, yeah, that ma- that makes sense. Um, let me put Cleveland Browns. Yeah, because they made a stupid trade and got that sorry ass. Tom Trent Richardson. Yeah, I remember. Sorry. You said he was overrated before the season started. I remember yeah, yes, that. Yes, I did. I said he was overrated when he came out of college. And I just remember I asked you, do you think – you were like, why the hell – why the hell – why the hell is Ch- – Rod Chadzitsky should be fired. He's an awful coach. Look how he's managing the offense with that sorry-ass Trent Richardson. And I'm just like, you think Trent Richardson is overrated? Yeah, I, I remember that, yeah. And like, like with that like scorn in my voice, I was like, you think Trent Richardson's overrated? Because I thought the world of him. The skip made the score. <laughs> I, I still think. I still think. Let's see what he does this year. But oh, Phil, really, really, Phil. No, 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 no. If he can hold on to the ball, <laughs> he's up, probably f- he's probably fumbling now. Probably fumbling the laundry in his house right oh, now. No, I'm just. I'm just saying he was. I mean, mid se- I mean, not mid season, but he was. I mean, he was traded. You know, let's see what he does in the off. If he sucks this year, then yeah, okay, I'm 100 with you. Man, he was bad all year last year for the Browns and the Colts. He's I agree. Bad. I agree. I'm not high on him either, but I just I'm just throwing that out there as a. He was like he had a thousand yards the rookie year. It's not that hard to get a thousand yards, sixty yards a game. You got a thousand yards. It's not hard. This is sad. I kind of miss you guys. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. This, this show's a lot of fun as you as you, as you very well see. Uh, um, I miss you guys all the time. Yeah, of course. Of course, we miss you too, Eric. No, you don't. Ah, fuck you. All right. Marquee. Hey, Eric, you're welcome. Anytime you want to come on, man, you're welcome. Yes, you, sir, are, yes, you, are most def- you are most definitely a member of the clan. Yeah, you can sure. replace Kid anytime you want. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> tr- tr- try to run this show without me. I'm the backbone of this show. Hey, it, it would be on time. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, everybody. Come on, y'all. It's two in the morning. That, does, it, that the does it for another edition of YouTube Take. <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed yeah, that's, our... fucked, that's fucked up. <laughs> oh, all right, all right, all right. Next we got here, Markeem. Speak with speak with your heart, not with your mind, not with what you've heard. Speak with your heart. Green Bay Packers. 
Well, uh, my heart. Yes. Um, an offensive lineman. I don't give a fuck who. Just uh, <laughs> um, hmm. defense could be yeah, well, defense too here. So deep, you know. You know what? You know what? You know what? Uh, I'm gonna actually go with Calvin Pryor right here. Makes sense. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Calvin Pryor right there. Cause even more so than the offensive line, which they have been trying to address. So I'm, you know, I'm gonna wait a while for that. They need defense. They need defense. Philip? The ba- the bad man has not gotten another ring because they can't stop anyone. So yeah, that's true. Uh, I was I was looking on my board um, to see who's left and uh, as far as top uh, cornerbacks as well. Because uh, I mean, offensive line they kind of really need too, but. It just seems so. Just from what we've been talking, it doesn't seem like there's that big of a guy, that big of a of a selection at this point in the in the first round. So uh, I'm going to go with Calvin Pryor too. He's on the top of my list. So um, I definitely won't take Calvin Pryor here. Uh, <laughs> I definitely won't. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be honest here. I don't I don't see it as a fit. Uh, I think Calvin Pryor is a great player. I, I just don't see it here, the Green Bay. Um, I'm going to take Xavier Suofilo here. Um, really? I think, of, yeah, I, th- I think they need a lot of guard help, and I think they're going to have to make a conscious pick here. I do see them trading out of 21. I don't think there's anyone should have played like this that they could take it all. So I'm, I'm going to take Xavier Suofilo here. Uh, well, I'm going to go with Calvin Pryor as well, just because I don't think they draft a guard. Um, at, at this spot, especially him. Like, if it was Zach Martin, yeah. If the Dolphins pass on Zach Martin and take C.J. Mosley and the Cardinals pick a quarterback, then that's the pick for, for Green Bay, Zach Martin, for sure. Um, but I don't know if it'll fall out that way. And just of the level of talent, both are needs, um, but the defense, I think, is holding back their franchise a hell of a lot more than their offensive line is. Yeah, Rodgers is getting sacked, but it's not like he still isn't a bad man. Like, the reason they're not progressing as a franchise, the reason they're behind the elite of the NFC is because of that secondary. So, my pick here is Calvin Pryor. Making him the 21st pick of the YouTube take draft. Uh, Marquise, Eagles. This was hard for me. Cause, you know, we just lost to Sean Jackson. More power to him. Hope you guys enjoy him, Eric. Um, uh, I know what I think we should get, and that's that's Kyle Fuller. So I'm gonna say Kyle Fuller. I don't think it's gonna happen though. I think they're gonna draft a wide receiver. I think they're gonna draft Brandon Crooks, which they shouldn't because he's a slot guy. We kind of need a big play guy. So, but I, you know, I, I think they're gonna draft Brandon Crooks. But I think they should draft Fuller. So who do I say? I would go Fuller. Go with who you think. It go should. with your heart. Okay. This is okay, our I want mock the, draft. I, yeah. I want the, I want them to draft Fuller, so Fuller, and that'd be great because he's a Virginia Tech dude, and that'd be just awesome. Um, th- this show is all about making dreams come true. <laughs> I hope. So for that reason, I'm going to take Kyle Fuller. <laughs> Yay! Uh, <laughs> well, this show to me is about crushing Markeem in the nuts, and I'm going to say Alan Robinson. Fuck up. <laughs> and I wouldn't mind that though. He's a big play guy. I wouldn't mind that. Who'd you go with? Allen Robinson. Oh, oh, he was my other choice, though. So. Um, I think they need running back death. I'm going with Trey Mason. <laughs> Are you serious right now? It's got to be a joke. Not even, not even Carlos Hyde, Trey Mason. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm. I don't. I honestly have no clue when it comes to the Eagles. I know they need. They need. Uh. uh Cornerback depth as well, so I mean, and cornerback help as well. So I'll go with uh, uh, Fuller, like you said. Oh, look! Look what we did for little Markeem. It's not gonna happen, though. Are you about to cry, right? So, no, come I, on. I, I, I don't have look like that. It's not no, gonna happen. But do the do the man. Y'all about to make me cry, man. <laughs> when, when Nightmare said, "Yeah, I want," they need running back help. I'm like, he's not about to choose Terrence West, is he? <laughs> that would have been cruel. Uh, Fuck. All right, it just spilled water everywhere. No worries. Okay, Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, for a quarterback. This is so hard to me. I, I, have no, I, I literally have no idea what they're going to do. I can tell you what the pick is right now. What, what, do, you, what do you think it's going to be? Allen Robinson. Okay, well, we'll go with that. Shit. 
Well, Allen Robinson. Ask the other people. Now, what, what do you guys think? Because I really have no idea what the Chiefs would do. They have a lot of talent on defense. They're set at quarterback. They're set at running back. Their line is pretty consistent. Yeah, they could, I, I, they I, could go with Jay Samaro here, too. That's another – that's a strong possibility, actually. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm leaning towards just taking the best player overall. They don't have a late, a gaping hole or anything. The best player overall would be Jay Samaro, I think. Uh, Jason Morrow, who's the second best rated tight end, at like forty three. Oh, he's forty nine. Okay, no, it's not oh, Jason Morrow. So it's probably uh, Allen Robinson of the people we haven't said. So um, I'm gonna take Allen Robinson. Yeah. So, uh, I think they need. I mean, you you got a game manager at quarterback. You need to try to you need to try to give him as many weapons as possible. Um, I just I'm gonna take the b- best receiver off the board. Um, I'm gonna go with Kelvin Benjamin. Kelvin Benjamin. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> just 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 entering Allen Robinson into the chat. All right, that's the top. That's the top uh, wide receiver that I saw on this list. I must be looking at a different list, but yeah, we haven't said Phil. We we were just talking about Brandon Cooks. And I know Allen you guys Ro- were and Allen Robinson. Oh, I miss actually Brandon Cooks. I think is the top on this list that I'm looking at. Well, so yeah, Brandon Cooks is where. Also, where Cody Latimer, I think, is a great fit for them, but I just don't think they're going to do it. I think Allen Robinson would be good for them. I, I, yeah. I like that pick. Next, we got the Cincinnati Bengals. Wait, so who who actually go? Who did Allen get? Robinson went at 23. The pick was Allen, Allen Robinson. Robinson. Yeah. Next, we got the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, this one, this one to me is tough. I'm considering Derek Carr here, but I'm not sure about that. I don't. I if they are gonna shock Andy Dalton by drafting a quarterback, you draft one of the big three. You don't draft Derek Carr. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this one's tougher for me. So you guys talk about it. Let me see. Um, I'll go first here. Um, I think this is Lewis next. Um, really? I think they, yeah. Um, I think this is really even with Geno Atkins on the team, you think Lewis Nix? Yeah, I think that he fits really well. I, I feel like he, unfortunately, is going to play in a system that doesn't benefit him right away. But this is something he can really grow into, and I really feel like being from South Bend, he's, he's a Midwest guy, going to stay in that Midwest region. Here. So I'm going to take Lewis Nix. Uh, to be fair to Eric, there are what should we call it? There are other D tackle. Their other D tackles are Brandon Thompson and Damata Pecco, and both of them played awful last year. Oh yeah, okay. so, so I could see I could, I I see that, and he's I think he's the best player on our board right now. Um, I'm pretty sure he is actually. But my my pick my pick here is uh my pick here is going to be one of the cornerbacks, whoever's left. I guess Jason Verrett, who's ranked 26. I'll tell you why. Let me tell you the cornerbacks they have now. Um, Leon Hall. Adam Pac-Man Jones and Terrence Newman. Oh, Jason Verrett's my pick too. You just said Pac-Man. <laughs> it's not even that you, those you, guys you, are. You just bad. said former TNA tag team champion. <laughs> Pac-Man I need to bring that up. It's just that he's it's a not, man. He's a man. He it's Pac-Man not Pac-Man Jones. It's not even that they're bad because I don't think those guys are. It's that they're fucking old. All of them. Like I just Pac- Pac-Man Jones' life is terrible. Right? He's he's terrible. He's awful. Pac-Man Jones is pretty much the juicy J to the rap team of the NFL. He played better this there you year. Go. He was the 30, he was the 29th best cornerback in the NFL. Ooh. ooh. Out of 90. Actually, well, I mean, he's, he, he's in the top third. Yeah. So he didn't do that. Looking at the glass half full. But that also that also went top five overall in the draft he was selected in and was in and out of jail. The, the most the most important thing he's done in his life is win a TNA Tag Championship. What did you, how did you think he was coming out of college? That can't be true. Come on. How did you think he was coming out of college? Oh, Pac-Man Jones? I, I thought he was an amazing kick returner, which is what he was. Fair enough. Um, so, yeah, we got uh, my pick is Jason Verrett. Marquise is Jason Verrett. Eric's is Lewis Nix, which I also think is a very strong possibility. Uh, Phil. Mine, I'm throwing a wild card because it always seems like there's a team down here, and I know I was joking with the Trey Mason pick earlier, but uh, I actually think the Bengals select Carlos Hyde here. And here's my here's my thinking behind it, and I'm maybe way off, but I just feel like someone's going to do something weird, and I'm going to go with the Bengals because I really have no clue 
elsewhere where they're going to go. Um, and obviously my pick is irrelevant because uh, I'm not in the majority. But I think Carlos Hyde, I think, you know, they have the law firm. They have, uh, G- I always butcher his name, Giovanni Bernard. Um, but I, just, I think that they could really use a guy that could that could, uh, that could could come in and, and give some support there. Um, I don't think law firm's the answer there. So I don't know. I'm just going to go with Carlos Hyde, even though it's not going to be the pick anyway. But <laughs> like I said, go with a little random pick there. All right, um, so Jason Brett's the pick. San Diego Chargers, I think this is Lewis Nix. I do too. I do too. Well, I'll agree, so we can move on. <laughs> so they, they need help there. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I agree, yeah. If he somehow falls to 25, it's perfect for San Diego. All right, Cleveland Browns, this one's interesting. All right, if they didn't pick Manziel earlier, then they would pick a quarterback here. But right. since we said they did... Um, I think this is probably secondary. So who's left? Uh, Terrence Brooks, Jimmy Ward. I, I see Bradley that. Roby. Bradley I can't Roby. see that either. What, 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 what else? Do they need a running back. Yes, they, need, they do. They need, Carlos they Hyde. Maybe, Carlos so Hyde. This might be. This might actually be Carlos Hyde. I wouldn't be surprised, actually. Hey, they have Woody um, Woodhead. Uh, well, my, my pick here is uh, Ryan uh, Chazier. Well, so. Ryan Chazier is what you said? I was thinking of yeah, the I'm going, Yeah, I'm going Ryan Chazier here. Because I, I originally have him taking uh, Khalil Mack, which is, in, which is outside linebacker. So I'm just going to flip and take the best outside linebacker on the board with Ryan Chazier. Okay, makes sense. I think it's just really ironic. I think it would be hilarious if the Browns were to use the pick they traded Trent Richardson for on another first-round running back. And because it's the Browns, that's very possible. Because as Markeem once said in his rant about Pat Shermer getting fired, you're the Browns. You suck. <laughs> so I, th- I, I just, just, for, just for the fun of it, I am going to say that the pick here is Carlos Hyde, and they pick a running back. And to be honest, they it is they, their they worst. They need one, though. Yeah. They actually need one. Phil? Uh, I will agree and go with Carlos Hyde since my uh, Bengals yeah. pick did not go. <laughs> so Carlos Hyde is going to the Browns. The- we took a running back. Yay. Yay. We're good people. But, like, it, it really is. No, we're their, not. It really is their biggest need. Like, their, their running backs were Willis McGahee. They they, add, they they did a poll on ESPN the other day. Who would you rather have in the backfield? Last year's Willis McGahee or 52-year-old Herschel Walker? Herschel Walker. <laughs> they, they also, I didn't even got to think about it. They all said Herschel Walker. <laughs> I, I, can, I can definitely see that. All right, next we got the Saints. All right, this one, this, this one I think is odd, okay? This is what I think is odd. I think they should go defense. But something tells me they go draft a receiver like crazy people. Yeah, I've, heard, I've seen that report. But I, I'm going to say D4 just because that's what they should do. Makes sense. Eric? Um, I, I've seen the reports doing offense here. And as much as I want to say they're going to go defense, I, I think Cody Latimer is the pick here. Um, I think that uh, with how the Saints work, they really are spur of the moment people, and Cody Latimer is kind of a spur of the moment guy. Uh, I feel that Big Ten style of just not dropping passes, working with a consistent pass like Drew Brees is a match made in heaven. Well, um, I'm going to agree with Markeem. I think they need help on defensive side, and uh, I just don't really see anybody on offense that they would go with. Um, wouldn't be shocked if they did it, but so I'm going to go with D Ford. So you two pick D4, you pick Cody Latimer. You know, Rob Ryan is like a mark for defensive linemen. Like he really loves bringing those guys into his system. So the D4 pick makes a lot of sense. But I do think just because they have Drew Brees, like it, it, their wide receiver class is kind of weak. They did just lose Lance Moore. Robert Meacham I don't think is anything special. Marcus Colston's getting getting older. And so that just leaves you with Kenny Stills and Nick Toon, who are talented guys, but then you're entering the Tom Brady logic of – And oh, Jimmy well, Graham. But, okay, yes, and Jimmy Graham. But then you're entering the Tom Brady logic of, oh, well, we don't need 
to, to fix our receiving core because our quarterback is good. And when you walk and we, along... And we, and we see how, the, all that, how well that worked and out. And obviously, as <laughs> Tom Brady showed us all, that's... Oh, that's <laughs> well, you know what I mean. That's, I, just, that's just not a good way to approach football. And yes, they have Jimmy more Graham. More the Patriot logic, but yes, go ahead. They have, they have Jimmy Graham, um, but I don't know. Cameron Jordan was really good for them. Uh, Cameron Jordan was a stud. Who was your other D end? You know what? I'm going to say Cody Latimer here too, just to cause a rift. So how do we break the tiebreaker? Uh, um, I don't know. I guess we, we can discuss it more. We could flip a coin. I have no idea. You know what? No, you know what? You know what? You know what? I'm going to change the pick back to D Ford because I want – I'm going to pick receiver for several teams left in the first round. And I uh, – I want to be able to have Cody Latimer on the board because I don't want to investigate too far down the wide receivers list. So I'm going to say D Ford here to make D Ford the pick. Even though okay. I don't necessarily think that's what's going to happen. All right. All right, so D Ford is a 27. 28. 28 is the Carolina Panthers. I want to go first. Um, I think that the Panthers could easily trade up here. They're gonna, they have got to get a receiver. And if receivers are going in front of them, um, I mean, I don't know how high up they'd be willing to trade, but um, let's see. Uh, let's see where the last receiver went. Uh, 23. I guess 23? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Allen Robinson. Eh, I don't know. I, I, like I said, I don't know the consensus. They may just take one here. Obviously, we can't trade up, so that can't happen. So I'm going to go with the first receiver, uh, the last next receiver on the list. Which uh, I'm going to go with Cooks. Oh, we haven't gotten Brandon Cooks yet. That would have that actually would have been my pick for the Saints. Oh, that's my pick too, Brandon Cooks. See, I'm not so sure, man. Like I say, he's a slack guy. You know what I mean, they just like Wes Walker. Okay, listen, Westwalker, listen, listen. Yeah. They they have no receivers. I I, I knew this. N- I knew no that. one, not even a slot guy. I, I knew this. So their I, best receiver is now on the Patriots. <laughs> and the Phil. Like you gotta. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I guess let's go with Cooks. Let's go with Cooks. I guess. And I guess my pick of staying with Latimer here doesn't make any sense. So I'm gonna go Brandon Cooks. I don't know anything about that Cody guy. So he is better than Brandon Cooks. I but disagree. Okay. I totally disagree. But so it's Kelvin. It doesn't matter. It's not. It's not by much. It's like what? my hair. Well, this is why we're sitting here and not an NFL executive, right? Right. But that's okay. Yeah, but they. They're basically getting paid for exactly the same thing we're doing. <laughs> they have they just research more. All right, the New England Patriots. Um, well, da 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 da, the team on the clock. I know who they should pick, but not who they're gonna pick. Yeah, exactly. I think they're gonna, like, pick, gonna pick is, in the second is, round after they trade down. Phil, Phil, <laughs> Phil, here. This is your t- wait. This is Phil's team. You can start us yeah. off. Uh, I mean, they're gonna trade down. It's it's obvious. They're not gonna. They're not taking this pick. Um. Now, they don't always trade down, but uh, I just from what this draft is going, I don't see a player. Now, granted, I don't know um, a lot. Of, like I said, a lot of people I've heard. Um, I see this one I'm looking at here has got uh, Ely. Uh, I've heard Rashid Hangeman, um, different things like that. I think if D Ford was here, I could see us taking him, but obviously he's not. Um, I don't, I don't even know. I mean, give me the best defensive line that you guys have. That's I, I, my pick would have been Timmy Jernigan for defensive tackle. He was a tackle. Okay, yeah, and that's and that that's what I would go with. Which now that hearing Braden Cooks is was a potential Wes Walker, uh, it would be nice that if he if we take him, but obviously we can't. Um, so I, I'm going to go with best defense. Let me look at the, the list real quick here. here. Um, I think we have. Um, see if there's a guy that Timmy Jernigan's I, the best player available at the spot. I disagree with that. Who would you say, Mark? That as well. Well, I, I, I know who I know who they should pick. I'll just throw that out there. Cody Latimer should be the pick right here. Like I don't even think it's debatable. They need a receiver. They won't though. They won't. They won't. They won't do it. They won't do it. Yeah, they, yeah not, it's not happening. I think Cody Latimer's perfect here. I'm taking him too. Um, but I, yeah, I'm going with best. I'll go with the uh, Timmy Jurgen since that's who. Okay, I'm going to persuade you guys, one of you, to let the pick be Jernigan because for the Niners, I think they are definitely taking Cody Latimer because not only do they want a receiver, they want fast receivers. 
They specifically oh, yeah, said that, that, is, that, is, that is true. That's true. So, so let's go with Jaren again because I don't think they're going to pick him anyway. So I don't think they're going to pick Latimer anyway, my, pick so. been, my pick would have been Cody Latimer for the 49ers. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, 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 I got Cody Latimer for the Niners too. And then I guess with my fourth straight pick, I'm going to go Cody Latimer for the fourth straight <laughs> So that's three right there. Phil, would you have made a Niners pick or would you have just done Cody Latimer as well? Oh, I mean, do y'all, I, I'm still trying to figure out where, where we're at. I'm just kidding. No. Hey, Latimer's uh, at, at 30 to the Niners. That's Niners. Right. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Latimer to the. All right, two more and then I can go to bed. Hey, <laughs> shut this fuck up. Um, all right. Can you send us a few rounds? What? Never mind. <laughs> Shut it. Uh, okay. Um, Denver Broncos. We have. There's a few people here. Um, this one's. They need really a receiver. Th- Man, they need. A, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you know what? God, this this team just went to the fucking Super Bowl. They goddamn have. And got have, raped. They have talent. So what you know? So they need. Something. I would pick an offensive lineman, but they made. You know, I, I would have no problems picking Xavier Suafilo here, just because he's talented. I want to. I want to keep him in the first round, and I. That was the problem in the Super Bowl. They didn't have enough offensive line help, so they just lost Zane Beatles. Why not? That's my pick. Have we have we said Shazier yet? No, we have not. No. This, this would be my pick here. Shazier was my pick as well. Hmm. All right, Phil. Down to you. Uh, let's see. What position does Zazier play? Outside line. Outside linebacker. Oh, uh, I really Put don't know. Put him on the outside of Von Miller. That's Have point. It. All right, I'll go with him. I don't. I don't really know. Ah, fuck you. Coming. Sorry, I don't really fuck know about you. them. My other pick would have been a cornerback because they need a cornerback too. They just signed but. to keep Tlaib. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Good luck with that. Anyways, continue. <laughs> Fucking you guys. Yeah, yo, it, it'd be hilarious if he doesn't miss a game. Hilarious. Yeah, he'll miss the one game that it matters, the AFC Championship, which is what he did to us two years in a row. Yeah, it's just like uh, we we have Ryan Shades. You're ranked high. We can't possibly let him fall off our draft board. Fuck you guys. All right. Um, last pick, Seattle Seahawks. I think that this pick is going to be, not without a shadow of a doubt, but pretty confidently, I think this pick is Stefan it. They just lost uh, Red Bryant um, to the Jaguars, and they lost also Chris Clemens to the Jaguars. They lost a lot of people on the defensive line to keep Michael Bennett, and I think Stefan it is a perfect fill-in person here to fill in that spot. Let's roll with that. I mean, I can't I can't think of what they do here. They just yeah. won the Super Bowl. Or... or- so. Or you can – or another name – I mean I guess we can debate this. Another name that I would throw out there is um, – what's this, what's this motherfucker's name? That guy from Fresno State. Uh, oh, yeah, Derek Carr. Um, no. <laughs> uh, no. De- Devon, no. De- I'm kidding. Devontae Adams. Oh, I, nah. nah I'd a, receiver, a receiver here makes sense since they lost Golden Tate. But I think Stefan Tewitt's the, the call. But, yeah. I mean if we're going to go with our – Eighth wide receiver of the first round. I think he deserves to be Kelvin Benjamin here. No, fuck Kelvin Benjamin. Why? Because he played for FSU and shredded y'all when you played it? He's not what? He's not fast enough to be that type of receiver. Well, they pretty much have everything on the uh, – they pretty much have you know a lot of stuff they need. I think this is going to be whoever's the best left on the board at the time. Which I think and, right now is Stefan Tewitt. Uh, or Sua Rashid, Filo. or Rashid Hageman, Rashid Hageman. Oh, Su- Sua Filo, I could also see. Um, Sua Filo makes a lot of sense, actually. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna go Sua Filo here. I was gonna go to it, but no, I'm I, tired, it, so. to it's my pick still. Okay, okay, so to it, I'm going to it. Phil, I think they take wide receiver Bruce Ellington. All right. <laughs> By the way, prediction, prediction. If the Jaguars don't draft a quarterback in the first round, they will, in rounds five through seven, draft Stephen Morris. Bank on that. Bank on that. His so, own. so, so what? <laughs> well, well I, I guess as a Redskins fan, I have to do this. So, 
If he plays it like this, 33, they'll be taking, probably be taking Derek Carr. I mean, I, I can't say them actually taking Garoppolo. And then at 34, as my team, the Washington Redskins, I would see them actually having to take uh, Jimmy Ward. So that, I think that would help us a lot. You know, let's 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 include them. Why not? Thirty three, Houston Texans. We'll say Derek Carr because he's the best quarterback. That's not in rankings, not what we may think. That's not off our board. And just so we can include the poor old Washington Redskins, the Deadskins. Um, you're saying Jimmy Ward from NIU? Uh, it, it it looks like it'd be Jimmy Ward or. Uh... Uh, it have to be Jimmy or, or Morgan Moses, one of the two. It have to be, yeah, Jimmy Ward. And I think Jimmy Ward is a uh, better player. So who are the who are the, who are the best players that didn't go in the first round? Derek Carr, Jimmy Ward, Jay Samaro, uh, Cyrus Kuandijo, Terrence West. Oh, of course, yes, that's superstar. Now, uh, in all, in all seriousness, uh, Garoppolo, <laughs> Tom Savage. Uh, Garoppolo, Kelsey Gar- Quarles. All right, all right, all right, all right. Bishop Sankey, I get it. Lorenzo. So no surprises aside from maybe Wait, Derek. Suofilo didn't go as well. No, so, okay. Xavier Suofilo is probably the best player on our board who didn't go, and then followed by Derek Carr. I think that's. I think that makes sense. Well, all right, that does it. That's YouTube takes mock draft. Um, I'm gonna post it. No, nah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna post it in the description box. That ruins the fun. But I will. Um, I'll post it here in the chat uh, more officially because Eric kind of just listed the players, not the actual teams, like I did all nicely. Uh, so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed your thoughts on the draft. Uh, drafts this Thursday. I'm excited. Should be a lot of fun. Should be crazy. Should and, be- and I'll be. I'll be tweeting along like I did last year. Probably not every day like I did last year because that was exhausting. But, yeah. I am and very excited. I'll, well, I'll be well, giving well, shout-outs to all the players I've interviewed to go. We probably will have to wait until Friday to see one. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey you know we should do? You guys are going to watch the draft on Thursday as it's going on? Yeah. We should do like a Google Hangout. Or some we shit. could. That'd be cool. I'm actually having a draft party, so yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. You're having <laughs> a draft party, really, yeah. Phil? And let well, me say that. It's mainly just to watch Damian Cloudy. Let me, let me say that, uh, <laughs> no. Phil, two years ago, on the first ever episode of YouTube Take, when we created the record, and I still have it, the first ever thing he ever put on his record was that Jadavian Clowney would be a number one overall pick. Boo! <laughs> and I just, I, you didn't exactly go out on a limb, you biased no. Mark. Oh, but well. I, I would, if that, if that does happen, if that does happen, I would like to applaud you for saying that two years in advance. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and I remember, I remember my exact remark to him. I was like, I don't, I don't know yet, Phil. Right. Yeah, <laughs> my exact remark. I don't know yet. Two years since we started YouTube Take. Dang, yo. Well, well, here's the thing. Uh, two things first. First off, uh, during Thursday night, I'm actually I might actually be at the Terrence West draft party. <laughs> Not wow. even kidding. Wow. Second, um, uh, what was the guy's name out of Miami, Florida? Who was the like the highly touted offensive lineman coming out of high school and then just crapped the bed all in college? So, wait, was he? Are you saying a lineman coming out of like played for Miami? He played for Miami, Florida, and is now in the going into the draft eligible. Chantrell, Chantrell Henderson. That's him. My bold, my bold pick. He is not drafted. Wow, cruel. He'll be a stud if he gets his shit together. That's a big if. By the way, also on YouTube, take on my record two years ago, Marvin Lewis will never win a playoff game, and that still stands to this day. Um. But the FSU will lose this year did not stand. But Markeem saying Alabama will not lose this year also did not stand. Uh, but yeah, it was a fun draft. Uh, thank you, Eric, for joining us. You honestly were a great presence, and we hope to have you back on the show sometime soon. Thank you, guys. It's great to be back anytime I can come back to the old tube of you. <laughs> nice. Tube of you. Uh, and, and on that note, we're out. Thank you, guys. Much appreciated. See you. Peace.